Good morning. This is the first Sunday of the new year. And we just praise God that we made it through 2020. We praise God for keeping us. We praise God for holding us together. We praise God for providing for us. And we praise God for Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you, as always, to Brian Jenkins and Jason Belt for all of their hard work every single week, recording our service and making sure that it gets uploaded to the internet. I also want to thank the congregation. Thank you for all of your wonderful gifts, all of your phone calls. Thank you for your generosity in this season. Thank you for being consistent in prayer in this season. Thank you for looking out for one another in this season. For if we've learned nothing else throughout 2020, what we learned was that we need each other, that we can't do this thing by ourselves, that we are called into community through the person of Jesus Christ, and God has a plan and a work for us. And so let's prepare for the call to worship. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Lift up your eyes and just look around. Praise the God of promise, the God of light, and the God of love. Praise the God who continually leads us and guides us in the best path for us. We praise God in worship. Amen. Our scripture for this morning, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. John himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Jesus was in the world and the world came into being through him yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of human beings, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me then as we consider for a topic this morning. We didn't know who you were. Savior of all people, who took on our flesh in a stable and slept in a box made for animal feed. Sages followed a star to find you, paid homage to you, and went home by another way. Be present with us in this moment. Be present with us in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Be present with us in the midst of political and racial unrest. Encounter us, Lord God, in your word. Encounter us through Holy Communion. Encounter us in song, in prayer. Touch us, change us. 
Send us out to walk in new paths, telling your story, proclaiming good news to the nations. Light of the world, shine on us. Shine your light of hope in the corners of gloom in our lives and throughout the streets of our cities and towns. Shine on those that are in the ICU wards. Shine on those who have lost jobs and lost income. Shine on all who are ill and give them strength to decide how they shall live whole lives. Shine on those in despair who need for you to make a way out of no way. Shine on those whose homes, families, and bodies have torn apart. Reveal to each of us a path of hope and a path of peace. Shine your light on your creation, on the earth and its creatures, things seen and unseen. Burn away the mist around us and let us see you face to face so that you can wipe away our tears and make death to be no more. Lights of the world, we praise your name. We give you glory and we give you honor. We lift up our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Here's a song called Sweet Little Jesus Boy that has been ringing in my spirit really the whole of the Advent and Christmas season. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you was. Didn't know you came to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind, we couldn't see. We didn't know who you was. Sweet little Jesus boy. They made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you was. You know it's possible to be aware of God and not really know God. There are many who accept the idea that God exists, but they really don't know God in a personal way. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there were many people who were made aware that a woman had taken shelter in a cave behind a dwelling place. There were some who probably heard her screams in the night as she gave birth, but there's no record of anyone in the city coming to her assistance or attending to her needs. Only the shepherds that were grazing their flocks came into the city to find the mother and child. They came because they had been told by angels that the Son of God was being born among them and that they would find him lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Much later, several magi would come to their home and bring them gifts. However, beyond these mentions of the outsiders who believed that Jesus was born, who believed that the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, was among them. Only the outsiders were privy to that information, who knew who was lying in that manger. The words of the spiritual that I read at the beginning of this sermon speak to the ignorance of the world about the baby Jesus Christ. In its simplicity, the song expresses the state of the world at the time, but it also expresses the state of the world in this time. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you was. How many of us really know Jesus. I mean, really know Jesus the Christ. I mean, we're quite comfortable with the baby in a manger, for babies are vulnerable, they're helpless, they're unable to do for themselves. Babies can be, to a certain extent, manipulated. But do we know Jesus, the King of Kings, 
and the Lord of Lords. The birth of Christ brought a message of hope to this world. Jesus, God with us, born into a world as a child so that he could respond to the feelings and troubles of his creation from the standpoint of having been there. Among the various names that he would be called, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, one of the names is Emmanuel, God with us. And that's important for us to know because it means that God can both empathize and sympathize with us. Did you grow up in a small town where everybody knew you and everybody had already labeled you? Jesus knows about that. Have you been talked about and criticized and persecuted for no reason at all? Jesus has been there. Have there ever been times when you were pretty close to living on the streets? Jesus has been there as well. There's no situation that we can experience that he cannot in some way understand and help us to overcome. When we look to the Savior for support and strength, we're looking to someone who's been there and done that. Being in touch with the Savior means that we are never alone. We are never without help and we are never without hope because Jesus promised never to leave us alone. The mission of Christ on earth was to show the people of God that God intended to take a torn up, busted down world and flip it into a better world. The kingdom of God would displace the kingdoms of this world. On a personal basis, the faithful would also find that God would flip their situations as well. Romans 8.28 says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to God's purpose. That's a tremendous reminder for us to keep in the back of our minds, no matter what situation we face. Is it COVID-19? God can handle that. Is it financial troubles? God has the cattle on a thousand hills. Is it stress and anxiety? We can cast all of our cares on God because God cares for us. That's the reminder that we get at Christmas time. God loved us so much that God became one of us in order that God might redeem us. Just as the birth of Christ announced to the world the presence of a powerful God among God's people, it should also remind us that God's power is in us. God will take our hunger and give us a satisfied soul. Take our darkness and bring us into the marvelous light. Take our defeat and show us the way to victory. Take our frustrations and give us new determination. Take our sadness and replace it with unspeakable joy. Matthew 121 says, and a virgin shall bring forth a child and she shall name him Jesus, meaning savior, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus' birth is a constant reminder to all of us that regardless of our mistakes or errors in life, we can be forgiven. The very name Jesus means he will save his people from their sins. The birth of Christ then is a sign to the world that when darkness covers the land, God is able to turn darkness into light. Even though there are wars and rumors of wars, there will be peace on earth and goodwill towards all of humanity. Although problems make life difficult, God will make a way some way. This child is a special child. For Isaiah said in chapter 9, verse 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, 
Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Most importantly, the Christ child is a sign of God's unending love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Oh, Christmas is over, but as Christians, we should still be celebrating. In fact, we are in the ninth day of Christmas. The 12th day of Christmas is on Epiphany Sunday, and so we are still celebrating the birth of our Savior, and we celebrate not as the world celebrates, the baby in a manger. We celebrate because we know God for ourselves. We celebrate because we put our faith and trust in the Savior, the man Jesus, who died on a cross for all of our sins. There will be many who will say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, but they don't know the reason for the season. There are many who will sing Silent Night without knowing the child who was born that night. In the words of that old spiritual, they didn't know who you were. You can't really celebrate Christmas unless you know God for yourself. You have to know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. You can buy gasoline for your car from any manufacturers. You don't have to know the president of the company, but if you want to get to heaven, you've got to know Jesus for yourself. You can buy a McDonald's or Wendy's hamburger without ever knowing or understanding the founders of those companies. But if you want to get to heaven, you have to know Jesus for yourself. When you know the Lord for yourself, you know that when you are sick, he'll be a doctor in your sick room. In trouble, he'll be a lawyer in your courtroom. If you're lost and confused, Jesus will make a way out of no way. If you're hungry and thirsty, he'll feed you with bread of heaven. When you know the Lord for yourself, he'll pick you up when you stumble. When you know the Lord for yourself, he'll plant your feet on solid ground. When you know the Lord for yourself, he'll give you a new song to sing, a new walk to walk, and a new talk to talk. No wonder the songwriter says you've got to know Jesus. Know God for yourself. You've got to know Jesus. You don't need nobody else. And so as Christians, then our call is to live like we know Jesus. If we're living in sin, we are not living as those who know Jesus. If we're living with bitterness, we are not living like those who know who Jesus is. If we're living holding grudges, we are not living as those who know who Jesus is. If we continue to mock, to complain, to stir up trouble, to keep stuff going. We are not living as those who know Jesus. For Jesus is the one who lived on this earth for 33 years, who walked up Golgotha's hill bearing his own cross, who died on Calvary, but who got up early on a Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Are we going to continue to sing, we didn't know who you was? Or are we going to get to know Jesus for ourselves today? For we don't want to get to the end of our life and have God say, I don't know you. So I invite you today, at whatever place you are on your journey, if you don't know Jesus, I invite you to ask Jesus into your heart. If you know Jesus, but you haven't been living like it, I invite you today to clean up your act, to surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit, that change might occur. God is a forgiving God. And our excuse, as those who are a part of God's church, can never be, we didn't know who you were. Amen.
As we prepare for the first communion of the new year, I invite you to take a moment and get your, your bread and your juice or your communion to go pack so that we can join in communion together. God is with us, with us now. We lift our hearts with gratitude, even in virtual space. It's right to give thanks and praise to our God. And so we lift our hearts with gratitude, with hope, with peace, with love, and with joy. Holy living God, creator of all heaven and nature, you have breathed into us the gift of life. You inhabit our very being, and even when we turn away, you are there, part of us, breath by breath, heartbeat by heartbeat. In these moments of grief and despair over COVID-19, you draw us in with your love and remind us that we belong to you and that you've made us to be a hopeful people. In this moment, we thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you continue to do. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. In the midst of healing, feeding and teaching, Jesus bought a spark of something so special that people would tell his story over and over until it got to us. Jesus promised that he would be with us always and that he would keep us clear. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And so with joy and reverence and awe, we offer ourselves in service, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered in virtual space. And God, on these gifts of bread, and juice. Make them be for us the coming of newly born hope, love, joy, and peace. Open our eyes and open our hearts that we may be for the world love, hope, joy, and peace personified, strengthened by your presence within us, by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, and one with each other, and one in ministry in all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Let the church say, amen. Join me, if you will, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Though we are many, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are one loaf and one body. Eat of the bread of life. As Christ, we too are called to be poured out in service to the world. So drink from this, from the cup of salvation and renew your commitment to serve your God. Let's prepare our hearts for the benediction. Having been empowered and strengthened by the bread of life and the cup of salvation, may God's light inspire you. May God's angels guide you. May God's love protect you. May Christ, our Emmanuel, dwell with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.